I'm going to be fishing with the world's smallest chatterbait. Dang, I'm slacking it. But it went. There is a bass, literally. It just jumped out of the water. Did y'all see that? Oh, wait. I saw him swim out of the grass and get that. Look how that fish inhaled that bait. You think he wanted it? Do you think he wanted that bait? What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Be Fishing. My name is Brett. If you are new to the channel, uh, go ahead, hit the red subscribe button down below because I've got a good one for you today. I'm going to be fishing with the world's smallest chatterbait. That's right, the micro chatterbait by Z-Man. Now this thing is an eighth of an ounce. I mean, we are talking tiny. I'm probably gonna have to bring my spinning setup for this one, which I hate doing. I really like using my bait casters, but the thing's got a little bitty tiny blade. I've got this one in white. I've also got one in like a chartreuse white. These things work really good for trout. They work really good for bass. And I'm gonna be fishing it in a pond right down the road from my house. It's one of my like new favorite ponds, mainly because it's like a minute away. Like it's just right down the road. It doesn't get any better than that. It's got a lot of grass line. The water's a little clear, which I don't like fishing a chatterbait in ultra clear water. Um, I probably got three foot visibility in that. Probably a little too much, but we're gonna see if we can't make it work. The fish love hanging out in the grass line, so I'm gonna buzz this up the grass line, very similar to the way you would fish. Like I love fishing a spinnerbait up a grass line too. The chatterbait works in a lot of places that a spinnerbait works, and it, for the same reasons. It's got the blade, it makes noise, it has a lot of water movement, but it's like a swim jig and a spinnerbait mixed together. That's what makes it so deadly. We're gonna go fish with this thing. If you guys are excited as I am, go ahead, smash the like button, and uh, yeah, let's get down to the water. Let's go do the dang thing, let's go. Fun fact, I've got into that camera. The battery was actually not really charged in it. And I use an external battery, which you can see the cable going to it. And uh, the external battery is sitting on my workbench at the house. So that's not gonna work. Um, and I would rather keep my chest going. So y'all are just gonna have to bear, bear with me. But you guys know the deal, what we're doing, we're gonna be fishing. Yep, that camera's just died. We're gonna be fishing with the micro chatterbait. Um, I've got two different color options. Like I said, I've got that white and silver, which is this guy right here. And I've got him rigged up on a medium rod. This is like my crankbait setup. I'm hoping I can maybe get a little bit of whipping action on the end of that rod since that rod is a little bit lighter. Maybe I can fish with it on a bait caster. But if not, I've also got the white and chartreuse um, micro chatterbait and I've got it rigged up on my fairy wand, which is a light action rod. Um, really shouldn't matter too much because it's so small. And we're gonna give these guys a trailer and the trailer I'm going with, don't mind the packaging because I, I lump a lot of these together. We've got some little paddle tails, some white and silver paddle tails. I believe that's gonna work on both. I've also got like a little green um, and I've got a black and gray or black and silver. So I believe that's gonna work pretty well. Either one of those options. Um, they are a little long, not a terrible, terrible thing. But I've also brought my little creek fishing, my creek fishing tackle box, which I carry with me, obviously, while I'm on the creek. And we've got these guys, this little three tail curly grub. And I think that'll work on there as well. And for this purpose, just so I can say that I've, I've showed y'all, we are going to use a paddle tail. I used to give Chris grief for this. If you're going to put this on a paddle, like put a paddle tail on a chatterbait, Chris used to do this. Now he did it on accident, but he was actually correct in doing it. Put the swim bait, a little paddle tail on there upside down. The reason this is, when that goes popping through the water, there's more of a backbone on the back of the swim bait, and it'll actually not dip down as far. So when you fish them like this, notice how much that tail hangs down as opposed to this. When you're fishing it through the water, this is gonna look more natural, and it won't be hanging down so low um, while you're fishing on this chatterbait. Because again, the chatterbait's gonna be doing this a lot. It's gonna be just pop, 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 pop. It looks more natural when it's upside down. Again, you're not losing or gaining any action, special action, 
uh, because the blade is going to be what's moving the most water. So don't worry about that too much. But it will look more natural if you flip your boot tail upside down on a chatterbait. You know, chatterbait's one of my favorite ways to fish. I have not done it a lot this year because I kind of figured it out last year. A chatterbait should not be a bait that you sit there and just do this. You're just, you're just retrieving. That's really not the most effective way. You'll get bit, but it's not the most effective way to fish a chatterbait. You want to vary it up. So if I cast out here, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to pause. I'm going to rev it. And I'm going to go back to my normal speed. I'm going to pop it a couple times. Just give it, give it a little something so those fish can react to it. You just don't want to be going straight retrieve. Oh, I think we just had one bite at it. It was off of a twitch. So that tells me something right there. I think we got one. Yep, he swallowed it. Yep, got one on him. Got him. There you go, folks. A little bitty bass right along that grass line, just as I was saying, on that white micro chatterbait. I think it's gonna be the way to do it. I did that on a pause. I paused just for a second and he picked it up. I really didn't even know he had it because he was swimming toward me. So setting the hook was kind of a, a lazy little thing. That's why I got him in the bottom of the lip, but there you go. A little bitty basses on the old world's tiniest chatterbait. All right, with the water being the clarity it is, I don't see, uh, I don't see me needing to use that chartreuse chatterbait. And honestly, I'm not really a huge fan of chartreuse chatterbaits anyway. I think white gets it done almost any watercolor anyway. Um, the only chatterbaits you're ever gonna see me throw usually are gonna be white, like some kind of brown pumpkin bluegill color and uh, black and blue. And that is literally it. I think that's all the chatterbaits you need. You don't need to get hung up in too much of a color thing. Maybe in the spring you can throw like a black and red one um, or a black and brown, like a crawfish type color. But don't get too hung up on, on the colors on these chatterbaits. Fish. Got him. Got him. Got him. Another one. Oh, he engulfed that one. Engulfed that chatterbait. I mean, absolutely inhaled it. Sorry. I know every time I bend over, like, y'all can't see. And normally I would use that camera, but Dumbo here left the old uh, battery pack at the house. There's, an, there's another one, another little bass on the micro chatterbait. Hey, you want me to tell you something that really stinks? When you go through all the trouble of uh, rigging up a GoPro on the front of your kayak and you forget the battery and, uh, oh, no, he knocked slack in it. He knocked some slack in it. Oh my gosh, they are hungry for this thing. Look at this, look at this. Look how this fish inhaled this bait. Look how that fish inhaled that bait. You think he wanted it? Do you think he wanted that bait? My Lord, buddy. Were you hungry? How about that, folks? He freaking inhaled that chatterbait. Micro chatterbait is putting in some work. If you've got a pond and you've got fish that you want to catch that are about this size, uh, micro chatterbait, my friends. Micro chatterbait. Little buddy, putting in some work. I love it. Another little tip is if you have a fish hit it like that, they engulf it, and they hit and run, like that one hit and ran toward me, like you could just tell he hit it on the fly and was trying to get away, most likely what that means is that there are other fish in the exact same area and they're competing for that food. So I would not be shocked, because you know we got bit over here just a second ago. Like right before him, I got bit and the fish hit it as soon as it hit the water. So I'm gonna cast back in that exact same area and I would suspect there are a couple more fish hanging out there and they're all competing for food and that's why you got that hit and run what i say what i say there's another fish there there's another fish there they're all competing for food and look at this look at this he ate it the exact same way 
just inhaled, inhaled it. Got a little bit of wind. There's a bass, literally, it just jumped out of the water. Did y'all see that? There was a bass that just jumped out of the water, landed on that foam piece, and then bounced back in. That was crazy. Another thing about this video is I am talking a lot. Like, I am giving y'all a lot of instructions today. I don't know what's gotten into me. Normally, I just try to be entertaining, but here today, I'm teaching. I guess because chatterbait's like my bait. I love chatterbait, so I, I know a lot about it. I shouldn't say I know a lot about it. I know a fair amount about it. I'm no expert by no means, but... My name's Brett, but my last name ain't Height. I'll tell you that. Oh, he, I saw him swim out of the grass and get that. That was so cool. That was so freaking cool. And that guy literally swam out of the grass where I could see him at the boat and plucked that off. That is so cool. So awesome. Fish number five. I think he's one of the bigger ones today. I mean, he's not a giant by any means, um, but I'll give him close to a pound for sure. I mean, he's just super thick back. They're starting to they're starting to build themselves back up after the spawn. Man, what that was fun. That was that was awesome right there at the boat. Bye, buddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. I just put the kayak up, and I still have the little micro chatter bait, um, and I'm going to give this one away. I have not opened this one yet. Um, I use the two out of my creek fishing setup. So I'm gonna give this one away. All you gotta do is leave a comment below on um, what you thought of it, where you would use this bait, um, as well as hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Join the BFF, the Bee Fishing family, and uh, we'll continue to make content like this. The world's tiniest chatter bait is what we were using today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. As you can see, the clouds not looking too good, so it was a good call that we left the water when we did. Uh, but that's going to do it for this one. Again, like button, comment on what you would do with it, and subscribe button. And I'm going to give that one away in the next video. So you need to hit the ding-dong notification next to the subscribe button, because that's how I'm going to notify you. Um, you need to watch the next video that comes out, and the next video that comes out, I'll have it in the description of who won that bait. So hit the ding-dong notification. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Y'all have a good one. Later. Bye.